Special Order Decision Problem 2. Fruit Computer Company makes special fruit-themed computers. Each unit sells for $400. Fruit Computer Company produces and sells 12,500 units per year. They provide the following. We're given the traditional format and the contribution format. Under the traditional format, we have revenue of $5 million minus cost of goods sold of $2,700,000 for gross profit of $2,300,000. We then subtract away the selling and administrative expenses of $525,000 to get the operating income of $1,775,000. Under the contribution format, we have revenue of $5 million minus the variable costs of manufacturing of $800,000 and selling and administrative of $300,000 to give us a contribution margin of $3,900,000. We then subtract away the fixed costs of manufacturing $1,900,000 and selling an administrative $225,000 to get the operating income of $1,775,000. A foreign company has offered to buy 85 units for $300 per unit. The manager says this will not affect regular sales. The manager says this will require variable selling and administrative and it will require an additional $30,000 of manufacturing fixed costs. If Fruit Computer accepts the deal, how will this impact operating income? Okay, so this is a special order question. We, we talk about if fruit, com, fruit Computer accepts the deal, the deal, how will this impact operating income? So we need to look at the impact to operating income. But this is a special order question. Special orders you know because the facts will tell you that a company comes and they're trying to purchase a certain number of units. Here, a foreign company has offered to buy 85 units. And the way you know it's also a special order is you look at the normal sales price. The normal sales price per unit, we're told, is $400. Now, if a company comes and they want to buy exactly at the sales price, it's not an issue. You just sell it unless, unless you can't meet that, um, that demand. or I'm sorry, you, you don't have the, the capacity to do so. But that's not the issue. It's when it's under the sales price, then we have to consider, okay, this special order, should we take this, should we not? And we have to also consider all the facts involved. Now, I'm going to give us some, give us some rooms on the right because we're going to have to do some calculations. But let's just read through the facts. Foreign company has offered to buy 85 units for $300 each. Again, below. That's below the normal $400 price. The manager says that this will not affect regular sales. That's one thing to consider of a special order is that, hey, if you sell to one specific customer, others might get wind of this and they might leave or be, say, I want to match. I want that lower amount. So that's why we need to understand that it's not going to affect the regular sales. The manager says this will, this will require variable selling administrative and it will require an additional $30,000 of manufacturing fixed costs. We have to take that into account as well. Very important that you see what exactly is going to go into this calculation, what's going to go into this calculation. All right, so with that, we can go ahead and we can do this calculation. We're just going to look at the impact to operating income, specifically whether operating income is going to go up or down. That's what we mean by the impact. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to do over here on the side a differential analysis. This is the easiest way, in my opinion, based on the way it's set up. Now, the good news is that we're given the information in the traditional format, which is just revenue minus expenses or revenue minus cost of goods sold to give us gross profit. And we subtract away the um, selling administrative expenses to give us operating income. And remember, think of that like profit. And then the contribution margin format, which we take a revenue minus variable costs, that gives us contribution margin. We subtract away fixed costs. So it's good that we have it in bro both formats to help us make it faster. So differential analysis is all about the differential, the change. Differential analysis is all about the change. We can go and we can calculate the traditional amount adding in the, the 85 units at $300 and get the totals that way. Or I like to just do the differential. It saves time. So the first thing is um, if we're looking at operating income and we're doing it as a function of the traditional format, contribution format, you can do it either way. There's so many different ways to do things in managerial accounting. That's one thing I like about managerial accounting. We're going to start by looking at the revenue. So the revenue change, we're selling 85 units at $300 each, $300 each. And that's going to equal $25,500 of additional revenue. And that is the change. So we have that revenue amount. Now, Let's again consider, manager says this will require variable selling and administrative, and it will require an additional $30,000 of manufacturing. Now, you have to read between the lines. Let's go to all variable costs. 
There's two variable costs. There's manufacturing and there's selling administrative. So what they're saying here is, well, we know when you have additional units, of course, you're going to need manufacturing because what goes into variable cost manufacturing, you're going to have direct material, direct labor, and overhead that's a function of the actual each unit. So we're going to have to do the variable manufacturing, the manufacturing amount. We need to calculate the variable manufacturing per unit because it's given to us in total, in total. To get the variable amounts per unit, we're going to go over here on the side and do a calculation. We've got the $800,000 of total manufacturing variable costs, and we're going to divide that by the number of units produced and sold, which is 12500 And that gives us $64 per unit, $64 for the manufacturing. We also need to do the same with the selling and administrative. I'll do two little asterisks for that. So we do a similar calculation. We take 300,000, divide that by 12,500 units produced and sold, and that gives us $24 per unit. We can actually add these two numbers together if you want. I'm gonna do them separately so you can see. We're gonna subtract away the variable costs for manufacturing, which is gonna be 85 at $64. We're also gonna subtract away the variable costs for selling and administrative, which is gonna be 85 units at $24. And we're gonna subtract away those calculations which 85 times 64 is $5,440. Variable cost selling ministry of 85 times 24 is $2,040. We're gonna subtract those away. And then fixed costs that are given to us in the problem, that amount, the, this is gonna stay the same. We're still gonna have those fixed costs. Fixed are fixed but we are told an additional $30,000 of fixed costs will have to be taken into account here. So we are gonna have to subtract away the additional fixed costs, which equals $30,000. Now you can see already alone that the revenue is 25,500, the fixed costs are $30,000. You can already see it's gonna be a loss. You can, so it's already gonna reduce, or it's gonna reduce our operating income is what I mean. And the amount here is going to be negative $11,980. So the question's asking, if Fruit Computer accepts the deal of $300 per unit, how will this impact operating income? It's going to reduce operating income by $11,980. So operating income goes down, is reduced by $11,980. So this is not a good decision to take on this. Now, if you're trying to determine how, how, what is the price that it would break even at, you can calculate that by taking the fixed costs over, which are $30,000, and you can see how much you need to sell. Well, if you have 30,000, we would need to sell 100 units. So at 100 units in this calculation, in the differential analysis, if we did 100, then we'd be exactly equal before and after. So if we could sell more than 100 units, at $300 per unit, then we'd be making money. That's the way to do this. That's the way to do this. So if we go back and we say, well, we'd be losing money. Either you need to increase the price per unit or you need to increase the number of units you're trying to purchase, again, assuming we have the excess capacity to do so. Maybe we do 120 units. That, then we'd be making money. Either way, right now we're losing money, so it's not in the best interest. So those are really our two options. Either we go above, above 100 units to make some profit or because then we can cover our fixed costs or, and again, the additional $30,000 of manufacturing fixed costs, that might go up of hundred units. So we don't know that either. That's another thing to consider. Let's just assume it does. And let's just say it's additional $30,000 of manufacturing fixed costs. Well, it's hundred units, 80, 85 units. If it's above hundred units, again, it's additional 30,000 of manufacturing fixed costs does not change. Um, that amount stays the same. Then you'd be making money at that point. Or we can increase the price per unit and assuming that doesn't have a change on the manufacturing fixed costs additionally added in here, you could make some profit that way as well. But we answer the question, the impact on operating income, operating income goes down by $11,980. Again, that's the answer here. And we do not want to accept this deal. We do not want to accept this amount unless again, we can negotiate for a higher price or more units, assuming the additional manufacturing fixed costs stays at $30,000.